Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 39 in the Free Cat series. Today we're going to redo that pegboard that we did back in video 4. But we'll do it in part design. I want to show you how to use these arrays here in part design. Today I'm using version 0 0.19, revision number 19758 on Windows 10. This is one of the development releases. So if we look at the spreadsheet that we used in that earlier video, these are some of the values and some of the aliases. So we have the board width, the board height, board thickness, the whole radius, the X and Y intervals. So we'll just reuse these uh, the spreadsheet. So we'll go into uh, part design. And create a new body and a new sketch. One of the shortcuts to getting started, instead of creating the body first and then the sketch, you can just create the sketch here using this toolbar icon here in part design. And it'll make the body and add the sketch to it automatically for you. So we're going to use the XY plane. This will be the pegboard itself. And I'll just make a rectangle here. And we'll center it using the point to point symmetry. And this will be the board height here. Board height. And this will be the board width. And we're fully constrained. So go ahead and uh, close this sketch and apply the pad. And the pad height or pad length going to be the board thickness. This is not a full size pegboard. If it's full size it'll be it'll be so many holes in it uh, the performance will lag so much so I'm making kind of an abbreviated size here the next step is to add a single hole and we'll do that with another sketch an XY plane. Now notice the sketch is on the back side so I'm going to move that up close the sketch temporarily and we'll go to the attachment offset not the placement. But the sketch is attached so we need to modify the, the placement. And that'll be by the board thickness. And now you see our sketch is on that face. So we, we did it without mapping to the face. And that way we can sidestep the topological naming issue should we happen to go back and change that sketch and end up with a different number of faces which I don't anticipate that that will do but we're set if in case that does happen now we'll put a circle down here on the lower left corner 
and I'm going to set that radius that's one of the parameters in the spreadsheet was whole radius and now I would like to position it somewhere along here that will be offset by the amount of the, the distance between the holes horizontally and vertically so let me set this position here that's be minus the board width divided by 2 plus the x interval and do the same for the vertical setting so this will be minus the board height divided by 2 plus the y interval and we'll go ahead and do a pocket so the nice thing about part design is we don't have to extrude and then cut we can do that all in one operation the pocket is basically the opposite of the pad it's a subtractive pad really is what it is and the dimension will choose just through all so that'll get us all the way through if we go back later and change the board thickness no problem it's going all the way through now we're ready to start using the arrays so we have the linear pattern feature which would array this all the way across in one direction we do not have a two dimensional array but we have the polar feature polar pattern and we have the multi transform so this kind of serves as the um, two dimensional array so that's what we'll use we'll click the pad and then select the multi transform feature down here at the bottom where it has the transformations we want to add our transformations here so right click and add a linear pattern and uh, this is the length so that is going to be the board width minus two times that x interval yeah and the number of occurrences will be the board width divided by that x interval and then we'll add another another linear pattern in the vertical direction We we'll always get an error for some reason. If we click reverse direction and then unclick it, we'll get a preview. So we'll choose the vertical sketch axis. And the distance here will be board height. 
minus two times y interval. And the number of occurrences. Board height divided by y interval. Takes a little while, it's uh, kind of slow. This workbench probably needs a little bit more optimization. I find that the performance of the path uh, of the draft array, the draft workbench arrays, is uh, quite a lot better than what you get in part design. And what's interesting, the part design is mostly coded in uh, C++ and draft is mostly coded in Python so you would think the C++ compiled code would outperform the interpreted Python code but just the opposite is happening in this particular case because um, I guess just more, um, more optimization has been done to this point in the draft workbench than what has been done to this point in part design. So that's the pegboard part design uh, part design version. That's going to wrap it up for this video, nice and short. We still need to look at using this mirrored feature and the polar patterns, the linear feature, the linear pattern is basically what we did here. So that's going to be it. I thank you for watching and have a great day.